Joined by Racing.com's Brent Zarafa. Looking forward to Cox Plate Day, obviously. It's, it's a bit of a, uh, a mixed view towards the day, given the dominance of Winks, I suppose. It is, and I suppose here a day before, it's got a bit of the calm before the storm, because uh, in 24 hours' time, there's going to be a lot of people, not only inside the course, but around the course. There's going to be a hive of activity, but it's been a race that has most people been talking about for the past, I suppose, 12 months since she won her third Cox Plate, and the build-up in the past sort of two weeks has been quite fantastic and I think everyone's really looking forward to uh, getting here to Mooney Valley tomorrow. Terrific day here on Tuesday morning. Obviously she galloped and, and a lot of people came out specifically to see her. It's a hard story to keep momentum because she's been so dominant but everyone's in awe of her when they do see it. Yeah, it was quite remarkable turning up here to basically Mooney Valley on Tuesday morning around quarter to six. The members' car park was full, um, so we sort of had to make your way through. And then as you come up to the near where the stalls are, it wasn't hard to spot where Winx was because there was basically just a, a big scrum of people in behind. And it's not something that you see not only just here in Melbourne, but anywhere around the world. Like There's not many uh, racetracks or uh, race meetings where you can... I don't know how many people were here on the Tuesday. Maybe there was 1,000 or 1,500 people. I'm not quite sure, but it seemed like there was a lot of people here for a track work session. And they're all basically here to watch one horse. And when they're galloping on their own, you don't really get... Oh, personally, I don't get a lot out of it. Look, you go, OK, there's a fast horse running fast she on its own. She looks fantastic. Yeah, she looks yeah, great. Yeah, they, yeah. Looks, everything's great. But it's just a, a sense of aura yeah. about her. And everyone was basically just silent, just watching this amazing animal just get around this track. And the thing that I do take out of it is she just corners so well here at Moonview. It's as, as if she sort of gets onto her leg and then just goes straight into that bend. And then as soon as she comes out, she just accelerates so uh, effort, effortlessly. And I think that really um, sets her apart from a few of her op opponents. When they get to this track, she just finds another level. You were looking for another story, and a bloke from At The Races came up with it, Matt Chapman. He's made a name for himself, hasn't he? He, he certainly has, and he's dominated headlines, um, certainly here in Melbourne and right across the world with uh, his comments relating to uh, his opinion and, and I suppose the opinion of some of those in, in Britain and Europe on the opposition that Winx has been facing. And I, Look, I'm not going to say I agree with Matt um, completely, but I, com I understand yeah, where he's coming from. from. Yeah, like, that's, he's entitled to his opinion. And I can see where people from another jurisdiction would look at what Winx has been competing and saying, well, is she really beating that much? And... The thing with her is she's, you know, everyone knows, she's winning from 1,400 right up to 2,000 metres basically over the last three years. But you see some of the horses they've sent out here, like they look at Yucatan, they look at Best Solution, other European horses that are coming here and beating our so-called best horses. Ben Battle and um, Blair House gapped our weight for age horses and then Winx has sort of just been beating them and not been beaten far and winning far in the Turnbull. So I can see where they're coming from. I, I, I don't completely disagree with their argument. I think the way that Matt Chapman executed it was so, so effective from a Mooney Valley's perspective because it has really given this race mm. some life and it's given us something to talk about because, to be honest, if we got to Tuesday and it was just winks again, how great is she? She's going to beat everyone. Yet there's not a lot of spice to it, but I think it's been great. Like, and then added to that, you've got Chris Waller who's come out and called him, yep. you know, what he's had to say about Matt Chapman. I wasn't expecting that from Chris. No. Uh, he's usually quite a reserved guy. He's usually quite someone that is quite measured and not someone that uh, tends to sort of buy into that type of thing. And the fact that he did, I, I thought it was really good as well because, like, well, good, Chris. He's shown, yeah. he's shown a bit of a backbone. He's a Kiwi. You're not surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, want, we want to see a bit of fight. Now, I think it's really sort of galvanised the Australian racing fans that I can imagine in yep. New Zealand as well, it's sort of like, we really want to see this mare kick some ass, basically, yep. because it'd be good to shut them all up. What about the other seven rivals? Uh, Humidor got so close to her last year. Do you believe that he's at the same sort of level? I, I've got to trust Darren Weir to have the horse going as good as what he can have. And I think the ace up his sleeve is the fact that he hasn't put on the blinkers this preparation and we saw what he did last campaign in this race or this time last year in this race with the blinkers on there's probably a couple of other factors as well the track was quite firm um winks had to make a surging run it was a great ride by blake shin that i think all those things culminated in the small winning margin but the fact is i wouldn't be reading into humidor's form from this campaign thinking that is his absolute best form because 
as we've seen with a number of different horses over the years, when they get those blinkers on, horses that appreciate them, they go to another level. So for me personally, I did notice in some of the uh, markets here in Australia, he was like $2, $2.10, $2.20 to run a place with, yeah, okay, Ben Battle's a good horse and he's probably going to be provide the stiffest opposition. In fairness, the rest of the five, I would imagine Humidor probably hasn't covered at his best. So for me, if I'm going to have a bet in the race, it's probably Humidor the place. What about Rostropovich? Not so much talked about him. The li likelihood that he'll go forward and Ben Battle will yep. go forward. Is that their modus to beat Winks? Do you I, I think so. I think just specifically with Rostropovich, he looks a real Melbourne Cup horse. And without... You know, the connection's coming out and saying we're using this as a barrier trial. Well, I'm pretty much going to say it. They look yeah. like they are. Like, And oh, personally, I'm not sure if that's the right sort of way of uh, treating a race like the Cox Plate. But in fairness, he's placed in an Irish derby. He's probably entitled to get an opportunity in a race like this when there's only eight runners. Um, but the feeling coming out of Werribee is that this horse is going very, very well from a Cups perspective. He's a genuine two-mile horse. So I wouldn't, I'd be treating him a bit as a... A barrier trial here on Saturday. Um, in terms of Ben Battle, he was fantastic in the uh, Caulfield Stakes. And what we've seen with Saeed this spring is these horses are really firing on all cylinders. And there's an air of confidence that they think they can run particularly well. I think the nature of the small field probably plays into Hugh Bowman's hands because I can't see him letting O'Sheen Murphy out of his sights on Ben Battle. I'd imagine he's going to keep within two or three lengths of the horse and we've all seen what she's done to her opponents in the past. There's a four-year-old mare arrived over here from New Zealand, um, similar to Winx, yeah. bred there, and, of course, uh, she's in wonderful form. She won a Group 1 Liver Mould at the last start. Where do you sort of assess her? I'm finding it very difficult to line her up. Um, my... Um, sort of understanding of the horses that she's been competing against in New Zealand is very difficult for me to get a, a strong gauge on her here in New Zealand, uh, in Australia. Um, oh, I'd be surprised if she's good enough to beat Winks. Uh, that's not sort of being uh, exactly a genius. No, no, yeah. it's, just, it's just that's just the general feeling. But I could see her definitely running into the placings. That's, but I'm finding it hard to line her up to the Australian form. That's for sure. Magnificent day on Saturday. We've got another Kiwi ladies first taking uh, her place in the Mooney Valley Cup. Yep. Uh, what about that race? And, and of course, uh, top of the book, you walla walla walla. Yeah, well, it's not often that you see a full field in the Mooney Valley Cup, but I think that's just the nature of the Melbourne Cup this year. Uh, there's a huge logjam of horses who are trying to get into the race and if they haven't got already a confirmed start, they're all looking to where they can they go, Geelong Cups, Bendigo Cups. Um, we saw last week uh, at Caulfield some horses trying to force their way in in the Caulfield Cup. They're, they're going to go to uh, then the Mooney Valley Cup as well So and then on to the Lexus potentially the next week. So like even a horse like Nikita who finished fifth in the Melbourne Cup last year's first emergency uh, for the Mooney Valley Cup. I was thinking Ventura Storm each way at around $15. Looked to be a horse who I thought ran quite well in a Caulfield Cup. He was good in the Turnbull. In what is an even race, I'd be just probably just leaning slightly to him, but I personally think there's probably better betting races on the card that, for me personally, look a little bit easier than okay, that. OK, what about a best bet on the well, day? Well, I think Savitiano in the Mayor's event for James Cummings and the Godolphin team, race number three. She's around that 2.20, 2.10 mark, but... She does look the best mare. She was scratched last week from the Tristark Stakes at Caulfield. Her run prior to that behind Vince Avella was very, very good at Flemington. So for me on Saturday, best bet, Savitiano.